It's Wednesday everybody and so we are looking at our focus in Philippians chapter 4 and Paul is the author of this chapter and so I want to just back up a couple verses to get the context and so this is verse 4 of Philippians chapter 4 this is what Paul says always be full of joy in the Lord I say it again rejoice that's really easy for us to read that and we could even sit here and say man that's easy for Paul to say that and and write that and tell us that but the fact is, where Paul is writing this from makes no sense to us at all. He's actually writing from prison. And so I want to show you a couple of pictures. I have three pictures that I want to, to pass along to you. The first one is the actual jail that Paul was in in Philippi where he was writing this. On the outside, it just looks like rock and mortar and it's not that big a deal. But the, the truth is how Romans would set up their jails is they actually would dig a hole into the floor and they would lower prisoners down in through the hole of the floor into the underbelly of the jail and it was connected to the sewer system where they would put prisoners it was down into a cistern and this is where Paul is writing this from so you can see these pictures the the next one is just a a picture of of the cistern that's lit up the, the old Roman jail and so you get a picture of of what this was but it wasn't all lit up when Paul was there it was dark it was cold it was full of people it, and again it was an a, it used to be used as a cistern and he's down in this dark place and he writes this verse I'm gonna read it again always be full of joy in the Lord and I say it again rejoice he goes on to say let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. You know, this is kind of crazy to us. You know, we're in the middle of this coronavirus thing, and, and you may feel like you're a bit of a prisoner. you got to stay at home, and, and, and we're not sure when this is going to end, and how do we figure it all out? Well, the key is, Paul is not saying to be happy. Paul is, this, Paul is telling us to have joy in the Lord. And so you think about being living your life and being in the Lord and, and living your life in the Lord and, and through God's strength. And so it brings joy to us. There's one more piece of this. He, he's telling us to be considerate. He's telling us to be gentle. So there's a lot of angst on this planet. There's a lot of people who are really uptight. And, and there's all kinds of things just swirling around us. And Paul is reminding us, have joy in the Lord and be gentle. Be, be kind, be considerate in everything you do. And, and so, how do we do this? I mean, what, what helps us? I'm going to tell you what helped Paul. Because the very next thing he said in verse 5, before we get to the fo focus of the day, this is what he said in verse 5. Remember, remember the Lord is coming soon. You know what Paul knew? When Paul was in the cistern, when he was in the jail, in this dark, damp, cold place, he remembered that this is a temporary thing. This whole life is temporary. And that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back with victory. And we're going to one day spend the rest of our eternity with Jesus in heaven. And so he, Paul is reminding himself, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And I'm going to say it again, rejoice and be gentle. And remember, Jesus is coming back. Okay, so that sets up perfectly our two verses that we're going to talk about in our focus. So let me jump to verse 6. So thinking about rejoicing, thinking about being gentle, thinking about Jesus coming back, then Paul says this, don't worry about anything. Instead, trade your worry. Trade your worry this way. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. And so when you trade your worry, when you give it to God and you pray and you're grateful, this is one of the things about mental health is, is when we're positive, when we bring in positive energy and positive thoughts, it helps us in our mental health. I challenge you, think about the things you can be grateful for. If you're watching this video, that means you have the internet. You know, we're, we're in our homes, at least we have roofs over our head. 
we can watch Netflix as much as we want. I mean, all of the things that are happening, yeah, your kids might be driving you crazy and your boss might be driving you crazy and you don't understand what's going on. You don't know when this is gonna end, but you know what? It says here to thank God. And so find your list of gratitude. Find the things you can be grateful for and start thinking about that because it'll help you feel better. It'll be good for your mental health. Okay, so don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Then, when you do all that stuff, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. There it is again. We have to live in God. We can live in, in our country. We can live in our region, in our location. But what we're really supposed to do is we're supposed to live in God. So we live in God. We rejoice. We're gentle. We remember He's coming back. We trade our worries to God. We do it through prayer. And then what does He give us? He gives us peace. And He gives us Peace that passes our understanding. There's so much we don't understand. And then he promises to guard our hearts and to guard our minds. And so I challenge you, find your positive things. Thank God. Trade up your worries. Give it to God. Thank Him for what He's going to do. So let me pray for you. Father God, thank you for helping us. Thank you for comforting us. Thank you for even the challenge of not to worry. God, I'm asking, just like the disciples asked you so many years ago, to increase our faith. I'm asking for all of us, every single person who's taking in this prayer, may you increase our faith and it rises above our fear. I know that there's a lot of people who are nervous. There's a lot of people asking, when's this going to be done? When do we get past this? But Father, right now, help us to live in you. Help us to remember to have joy, not about happiness, but have joy. Help us to remember we're supposed to be gentle. We're supposed to show people what, what it looks like to have faith above fear. Help us to remember this is temporary. You're coming back. Help us to remember heaven is our eternal home. I also ask you help us to trade our worries away. And I pray that you bring your peace. And you guard our hearts. And you guard our minds. And you help us to have faith bigger than our fears. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.